afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our um, bi-weekly uh, uh, cisgender program. My name is Jeffrey Jones. I am a health educator here at Universal Family Connection. Universal Family Connection is a social service agency who's been around for 45 years. Our esteemed uh, founder and president is Dr. Lorraine Broyles. Um, we provide um, full range of social services from our housing assistance, youth programs, HIV and uh, hepatitis C awareness, COVID awareness, uh, and other health issues, including this one. This is our uh, cisgender program, and uh, it's uh, sponsored in collaboration with Black Women Supporting Empowering Lifestyle Factors. It's called BW Self. It's a program uh, sponsored by the Chicago Department of Public Health, and we welcome you to our 12-month series. This is called Our Power, Our Voice, Our Control, Our Power, Our Voice, Our Control. And it supports Black women with health and wellness discussions featuring Black female medical doctors. Recently, we added uh, some male doctors as well. And as you can see, I am not a Black uh, female. My pronouns are his and him. Okay. Uh, but it's uh, mainly for uh, Black women. And they started this group, the cisgender group. And, um, and so other clinical providers. Uh, uh, we sponsor this through our, um, we provide this via our monthly Zoom webinar on shared lessons with the latest COVID-19 information to help us survive the pandemic while addressing systematic factors that continues the HIV epidemic and other health disparities in the Black communities. Our topics have, uh, have included HIV, uh, PrEP awareness, hepatitis, mental health resources, and creating a self-care toolkit for Black women. And uh, we'll be, uh, we're always joined by very informative and most of these um, um, very educated Black women uh, that deal with these issues related to health and wellness. So I'm gonna give it back to Dr. Brittany. Welcome everybody and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy. Thank you for being with us, uh, Ms. Yara. She's currently a doctor student. Uh, she's really outstanding, a phenomenal speaker. I've seen her speak a few times and uh, her specialization is in trauma and dis disaster relief. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring in Yara. Uh, you can see her, her huge smile. So her spirit is going to illuminate throughout this full presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Marner, and thank you, Jeffrey. It's such an honor to be given this platform. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if possible. All right, so welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. The topic today is HIV back to the basics and self-care importance. All right, I'm gonna start by giving a little bit of introduction about myself, why I'm even qualified to speak with you today, um, and my goal and what I expect for you to get out of today's presentation. So um, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Martin. So it basically tells you who I am and um, how I got here. So I have completed my master's, excuse me, <clears throat> in clinical mental health from Concordia University. And that just have happened over this fall. Um, I'm currently enrolled um, in North Central's doctoral program. Um, and I have a specialization, I'm getting my specialization in trauma and disaster relief. I'm an author. I have a book that's being released in the fall. It's called Deeply Reluted, um, Rooted, excuse me. And that sort of goes over how did I work through my own trauma, right? I also own a personal development coaching company. Um, and truly, I believe through finding your purpose, having passion and um, repetition. These are ways that we improve the quality of our life, right? I feel like the richest people in the world know, uh, it comes from knowing who we are internally and we're gonna get to follow by um, having that manifest on the outside. So I just wanna say thank you for um, sharing this time and space with me. And I'm completely honored to um, to be have been selected. Um, I wanna chat in, I wanna tap in with, uh, with everyone though. I want to know how is everyone connected to the call? Uh, thank you guys for joining as I stated, but how are you feeling? If you could just go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, are you feeling excited? Are you feeling down today? Uh, this is a time to be transparent. I know for me, <clears throat> I feel, I feel pretty good. Um, I've had my two coffees today, so I feel excited um, about this about this presentation and to be able to share. Um, but if you could just let me know how are you feeling today overall? 
um, just to do a mental check-in. And let's get into the content too. Um, I can't see if anyone said anything, but I hope you guys were interactive, but let's get into the content, right? Let's explore where we are right now, um, how I'm connected to this presentation and then where we're going, right? So in 2020, what happened? In 2020, we all experienced a pandemic. We all experienced a traumatic event, right? And so what is trauma? What is a traumatic event? So trauma is an emotional response. That, that means an outward expression, right? For From a terrible event. And that could be an accident that is verbal abuse, physical abuse, and also a natural disaster. So if I um, experience a traumatic event or something that seems to be a traumatic event, trauma is the residue from experiencing that event, right? So the side effects from what we have just experienced was the loss of our basic needs, that's shelter. We've seen a decrease in the economic flow, a loss in jobs, right? Um, so we all experienced this sort of traumatic event, right? and the side effects of that. We also see the decline in health, a decline in resources. And so Yara, <clears throat> let's explore me. I have experienced my own amount of trauma in my life. And what prompted me to get into this field was, hey, I wanted to learn more about myself. I wanted to investigate um, my traumatic experiences. So, and I understand that trauma teaches us and we have to get the tools, which every person that's on this call doing right now, in order to recreate and create a life better past our traumatic event, right? So I just want to say that I'm an advocate for humanity because obviously I speak and I study from a place of experiencing traumatic events. I'm an advocate for a person being a victor, not a victim, right? And being an HIV carrier from a perspective that could be a traumatic event. And we're going to get into how we can become a victor and the resources that I've used, right? So we've all experienced traumatic event. We've all, and if we know anything, when we experience a traumatic event that is directly related or correlated to our mental health and how we view the world, right? So if I view the world negatively due to my traumatic event, the quality of my life will be poor, right? And so what I'm here to do is to give you tips and tools to improve, right? So let's talk about mental health. What is that? Let's let, let's uh, improve our languaging. What does that even look like? So the mental health um, has four different characteristics. It's my emotional well-being, right? Am I in control of my thoughts, feelings, and emotions? I know that at some point we've all felt out of control. So that's emotional well-being. It's good adjustive behavior. Hey, when life happens, how am I coping? Am I not coping? People can cope through life, but am I coping from a way that is a, a healthy standpoint, right? And then three, do I have freedom from anxiety, right? We all have the regular nervousness, but when it comes to mental health, do I have, am I free from anxiety? And then fourth, the capacity to establish healthy and constructive relationship is um, directly related to our mental health. So the quality of our relationships, right? And we can know with being abused, with being, with getting a certain diagnosis, with experiencing pandemic, which was all stated in our previous slide, that could affect our quality of relationships and how we function within those relationships. Um, so a traumatic event, we naturally see a decline in our mental health, right? We naturally see that in our life quality. So let's get into the facts, right? So globally, there's about 73.6 million who are, who are infected. That's as in um, from 2020 with HIV. Um, and then the, and the, the fact that I want to give you guys is that the mental health condition that is most related to HIV is depression, right? And we've all felt depression in a certain type of way, right? Um, but what does it look like? It looks like sad or anxiousness not wanting to do activities, especially for those who are HIV characters. I'm highly irritable, people that deal with trauma, right? After you experience something traumatic, you feel frustrated, right? I'm waking up too early, I'm not, I'm getting inadequate sleep. These are directly correlated with just being diagnosed and going through the systems or experiencing a traumatic event. You feel tired, you feel uh, aches and pains, right? Um, because we know biologically when things happen to us physically, that can be directly correlated Related to how we feel, right? If we're hungry, we get irritable. Why is that? Because there's a decline, they're related. Um, and so these are the symptoms that I wanted to get. We might feel guilty, worthless. This is 
um, hopeless, not sleeping well, as I stated, not eating well, right? And then even, right, to get as real as real, thinking about suicide or harming ourselves when we're going through and experience traumatic events. This is the severity of not being an active participant in our life. When we, when, we, when we take the posture of being active in our life and being the victor and not necessarily the victim, no matter the diagnose or the traumatic event, then that's our place of healing and progression, right? So let's get into the reality. So the reality is, we experience something traumatic, um, but living with a um, but living with a, a chronic illness, being in a stressful situation, um, comes with three main side effects. Right, you have a stigma. Right, people view you in a negative way just because you have it. And then we get judged or we get treated unjustly. Excuse me, that's discrimination because of it. And then social isolation. So there's three different realities um, that could have been or could be your reality due to being diagnosed the HIV carrier or going through a traumatic event, right? Um, because you might feel as though, hey, I'm alone in this. No one understands me. So that way, therefore, that's directly correlated to, that's, excuse me, that's directly related to how I interact. Now I'm gonna go into social isolation because there's, I'm perceived to be negative. That's the stigma, right? Of being who I am, my diagnosis, and I'm getting discriminated against because of it. So these are all things that we are going to overcome and give we will be given tips and tools to overcome. So my purpose here now is the question, how do we overcome this? How do we make this journey a little bit better for one another? You and I, being a person that I am who have already experienced and overcome um, lots of trauma within my life as well. How am I able to change the quality of my life? Great question. And what we're here, we have two main things we're gonna focus on. Self-advocacy, what does that mean? That means I'm finding my own voice in my own pain, in my own discomfort. And then the second one is self care. What does that mean? I'm being conscious. I'm intentionally making or um, I'm intentionally doing activities that align me with my best physical, mental, and emotional health, right? So let's get into how we do this and what this looks like. Let's go with the definition, right? Self-advocacy. What does that even mean? Um, that believes um, that means that having the ability to communicate effectively and negotiate um, who, uh, and negotiate um, my needs and convey my needs effectively, right? For for an example. Most people, when they get pulled over sometimes by the police, they don't have, they don't know, they can't be their own advocate. They don't have enough resources. They don't know enough information to advocate to know their rights or not. So when we're um, thinking about self-advocacy, what I'm doing here is understanding, and I want people to understand, you have to play an active part uh, actively in your life as well when it comes to um, the things that we have uh, experienced, traumatic events. So self-advocacy, it has three main elements. What are those three main elements? That's understanding, I want you to write this down, understanding, knowing, and communicating. Understanding, knowing, and communicating. So I have the ability to communicate what I need, right? You're not just going to tell me what I need, I'm doing my active research on what I need, right? It creates independence because you can't just tell me certain things, as I said before, I'm actively participating. Hmm, that doesn't sound right. I'm gonna advocate myself. I'm, I, I have enough information to provide educated, um, to, to provide that uh, I have enough information to not just accept what's in front of my face. Um, I have the ability to add to it, right? And, and grow. Um, from my standpoint, right? And this empowers people, honestly, to be, to find solutions instead of the problem. So we, we look at what we have, a diagnosis, a traumatic event. Yeah, that's a problem, but being a self-advocate says, hey, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to find different solutions. There's a different alternative for myself, right? And so I wanted, want you to know that's understanding what I need as a person. I'm not relying just on the doctors. I'm not just, you can't just tell me anything in a support group. Although those are, those are, um, very um, reliable like that you can use those things but doing the understanding and knowing what you have to do on your on your end getting that knowledge doing your own investigation that's what I'm trying to get to and then knowing right so understanding is one and then knowing 
knowing what type of support. So the knowing is 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 knowing yourself too, right? Because it, it means that I'm uh, I'm self aware. Do well, you know what this makes me feel a certain type? This medication makes me feel a certain type of way afterwards. I wonder if there's something else that I can take. I'm not just going to accept it. It means being aware. You know, I don't like this therapist that supports me. I don't, you know, I need to look more at cognitive behavior rather than a, a different way of doing things, right? Um, so making sure that things are catered towards you, you know what you need, and then communicating that, right? And this is where we take ownership. This is when we become the victor and not the victim. When we're effectively, we are effectively able to communicate and ask people what we need, right? So let's get into what it looks like in healthcare. So I'm going to go through um, a couple questions. Self-advocacy in healthcare, well, we're going to go through a couple questions. And, and these are things that you can do, uh, not a couple questions. We're going to go through um, a couple of um, points. And I want you to know, I want you to know if you're doing these things or not. And yes, we are um, talking about this in a healthcare instance, but you can check in in any area to, to um, be an advocate when it comes to this. So learn as much about your diagnosis as possible. Learn mu as, as much about your health and your health history and your treatment options as possible. That's, that's taking the position of being an advocate for yourself. List, make a list of questions, right? You come already prepared, right? Um, that's what I used to do after you read, when you get an assignment or anything, you come with questions before your appointment. Um, ask questions when it comes to knowing about your medication, right? Um, hey, is there any medication that has less harsh side effects? I really don't like the way this is agree or this doesn't agree with my body, right? And then asking for explanations, right? I think sometimes we take things as law, as I stated, and this would be a common theme. Don't always take things for law. Get your own understanding, probe. I'm a person, I always ask my professor, can you repeat that one more time? Can you say that differently? Can you explain that a little bit more, right? Getting that explanation, knowing, right? Uh, taking notes, taking notes at your appointments, right? Understanding your own pain points in this. And then also uh, discussing your health issues or places of improvement with your, um, uh, with your provider. Hey, I really don't like this. This is making me uncomfortable. Giving them feedback, right, uh, with that. And then ask for copies of all your medical records. Also get a second and third opinion. Do your own research. Um, and then also I want to point out understanding yourself, right? Understanding that, hey, if I go to an appointment, there, there was many of times where I went to appointments um, and just like, let's say my therapist and re-going to that event, um, not, not event, excuse me, going to that appointment again causes, builds up an emotional response. And that can be just the same feelings that HIV carriers can feel. Hey, that's re-traumatizing me going to, I have to go through this again, knowing who you are and adequately preparing for that. And what does that look like, right? And we'll get into that later. So I want you to write that down. To be a self-advocate, three different points. I have to understand, I have to know, and last and most important, I'm, I'm communicating. Write that down that's in all areas of your life too, right? And so what does that look like with, and this is an activity that I want you to partake in, right? And answer the questions in your head as I go through them. Um, the, the quality of your care, and I want you to check in with yourself um, and ask yourself this about your experience um, with your, within, when it comes to your quality of care, right? Um, do you receive different services when you go to one clinical location or you have to go to multiple places, right? Is it convenient for you? Does your doctor communicate well? Are your answers, are your questions being answered? Um, also, when you speak to your peers or your colleagues or someone else, right, um, how is their level of care um, as well? You can rate that. Um, so do you get your regular viral loads tests or your drug resistant testing? Um, also, does the staff help you when it comes to making um, informed decisions when it comes to your care? Are you getting the support that you need? And this is all part of being an advocate for yourself. It's honestly just um, taking the standpoint of making sure that you check with the outside forces, the outside um, elements of your life to make sure that your recovery, your journey is the best uh, according to your life.
And so also the second point that I wanted to get into, that was self-advocacy. I wanna share in regards to self-care and how important it is. And I wanted to share from the standpoint of the biopsych social, excuse me, the biosocial, the biopsychosocial spiritual model, all right? And so we know that the um, self-care, that, excuse me, we know that self-care, it means to um, intentionally put yourself first when it comes to the physical aspect, the mental health aspect, and emotional. Am I doing the best and giving my best and being intentional when I'm taking care of myself? And I wanted to look at it and approach it from this model to look at the person holistically, not just the biological standpoint, our medication, our physical activities, not just the social aspect of self-care, right? Work, school, um, the support groups that we, that we might have, not just the psychological, the mental health, right? Therapists, journaling, coping skills, health, but just the spiritual component, right? Not a religious component, but the spiritual component. And what do I mean by that? In life, we create meanings to everything in life. Um, for a long time, my traumatic situation created a meaning that filled my life full of, I was not going in the right direction to say the least. Um, because of the meaning, the application of how I thought about certain, uh, how I thought about certain um, experiences in my life. So I wanted to go ahead and present this model to you to stretch your understanding of taking care of yourself, right? Not just exercising mental health, but hey, what meaning am I applying this diagnosis or these appointments? What emotional response do I have to this? What, 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 what am I feeling? Am I spiritually conscious of, excuse me, am I self-aware of how I'm feeling? And um, just um, implementing that spiritual aspects when we think about self-care from a holistic point of view. And let's get into what that looks like, right? Okay. And that is, um, so the biological standpoint as I went over. So that includes um, knowing what your history is, that also includes your medication, right? Um, your, if, if there was substance abuse, understanding um, the development part, um, understanding physical, uh, the physicality part, understanding that you have to go out and be active, right? That point, and then the psychological, which we know, what are your stressors in life? Uh, do you deem this to be um, traumatizing? What are the symptoms that you are experiencing? How do you tap in to relieve yourself? Do you have positive coping um, skills? Have you you replace your old with the new, right? And then that social aspect, right, of self-care, right? Because we need that community aspect to feel as though we are complete self. And how about your support groups? Who are you tapping into every day? Uh, what are the resources that you have? Are you tapping into your strengths? That's really, really, uh, really, really strong and import important because if your system is not connected to strength, um, then when you experience a traumatic event, you you will you, you will crumble. Like it, it it'll all fall apart if your support is not there. And then, as I said before, the spiritual aspects, us creating meaning and applying meaning to this bigger connectedness that we have of life, right? What does this mean for me? And I just want to put out there, I want to point um, for me, as I said before, I created, I put a different meaning and a spin on my life and the things that I deem to be traumatic. And that's when I see an improvement in my life. So I want you to change your cognitive processes. Um, and, and, and that involves reframing how you think, right? And just as simple as, you know what, this didn't happen to, it happened through or it's happened for me, right? Changing that languaging, understanding that your pain point, that traumatic event, um, that diagnosis, that situation, right, is your pain point, but it can also be your purpose. We can turn this whole thing around. And this is how we build resilience when we connect that spiritual aspect of self-care. You know what, you know, this, this happened to me, but I can come on top of this. And that's what I'm here to help everyone on this call understanding. The, the central theme, life is how we make it. So things happen to us, 
but what we think about our mindset is how we prevail and how we keep going. And we can constantly tweak it if we're feeling less than in certain areas. So watching our languaging when we're speaking about ourselves, empowering others, being around people that have what you don't have. Hey, I feel really bad today. I don't feel good about what I'm going through. You know who has that? Let me tap into someone else in the support group that I know that'll give me the languaging. And that, and that, that helps us increase our self-care. Um, and increase that, that and it helps us excuse me to look at ourselves holistically not just eating right but how you know what does this mean for my actual life it, it has us dig a, a, a step deeper right and so for me i want to point out that last point is affirmations and talking like self-talk is what i do all the time especially when i'm faced with um, something that might come up that might trigger, right? And we, we talked about that earlier, how maybe going to appointments or hear, hearing, a, hearing a conversation um, or hearing the news or seeing the news, excuse me, depict something in a certain light might trigger us on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we need to have something um, to combat that with. And the tools is self-care and advocacy. And if we look from a spiritual aspect, that's deeming who we are from the center of who we are. Mastering that self-talk. Yeah, that is true. But, you know, I'm actually using this to empower me. And I do it on a daily basis. Even when I hear things, I overhear things. I say, no, that's not right. It's like I'm changing my brain to, to think a different way because literally we have to apply different meanings in order if we're looking to further our journey and um, have a higher improved quality of life, right? So when it comes to um, self-care and the biopsych social model, spiritual model, uh, we have to know that our mental health and um, our, the, the way that we take care of ourselves in each sector, the biological, the psych, the social, and the spiritual, uh, we all have to do the self-care and also the advocacy for ourselves as well. And so I want you to pick which one, which section, either the bio, the psych, the social, or the spiritual, and think about one way you can advocate for yourself, right? Maybe you can do some more research for yourself in these areas, or one day, or one way you can take care of yourself more in that area. And that's either biological, maybe you know the medication, the physical, working out, psychological, a therapist, life life coach, webinars, um, mental health, social, HIV support groups, starting your own support groups, changing the way that you interact, changing the way that you can, um, changing the way that people view this sort of, and, you know, decreasing or alleviating, excuse me, the stigma that's already attached. And then that spiritual connection. Um, I would kind of urge you to create a, a deeper meaning to what, what what it means, what it means for you. What does this mean for you in your life and how can you take a grasp of it? Um, and so it leads you to, to be a victor and not a victim. And I want you to commit to one of those and be an advocate or self-care for yourself in that area because I want you to start thinking about yourself just not in one spot, just not in one um, area, but holistically to improve it because they all affect you directly. They all affect you. And then we want to get into what does that lead to? That leads to us being more confident. Um, and what does that lead to? That leads to us having a better, um, being able to advocate, right? And being able to um, confidently go about our day and implement those self-care. Um, it, it, it goes, it, it, it enables us, excuse me, to have that or build up that stamina in order to freely talk, teach and educate others um, about what's going on with ourselves, right? And so I wanna take the time out to encourage you to be an advocate, right? Be an advocate for yourself, stand up for yourself in, in, in the areas in which you don't know about. Just because you don't know about them doesn't mean that you cannot do the work and, and, and create and be an advocate for yourself um, because this is, um, this is an epidemic that is widely spread and it's affected us tremendously, correct? And so have those communities, think about yourself holistically, gain the confidence within yourself in order to be an advocate. I know that I have when I have experienced my traumatic event. So um, I'm gonna leave you with this quote, it's be bold, use your voice, uh, be brave. Um, and you know, one of the best things is listen to your heart. I like that one, um, that line in there the most. Um, and be strong enough to live life 
as you always imagined, despite, and I think that's what we can take from here, despite of a diagnosis, a traumatic event, despite the pandemic, what do you choose, right? Like, what do you choose? Because you still have a choice, even though you've been, um, even though we've had this experiences. And that's what I want each and every one of you to understand and realize, right? And to be empowered. So I wanna thank you all for sharing this time with me, but I can be reached on my website with consultwithyard.us. Um, I'm Consult Yars. You can find me on, on Instagram or either Facebook. I do personal development coaching and then my book is coming out in the fall. I'm super honored to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. And I will be taking questions as you have them. And I hope it was helpful. Thank you, Yara, it was very helpful. You're welcome. Any right. questions in the chat? Yeah, perfect, Yara. Thank you so much. That was excellent. So just really quickly, I'm looking through the chat right now. And quick question for you. So what, what are some of the things that you do for self-care now versus when you originally started? Right, perfect. That's a great question. So when I originally started, transparency. Um, so... When I was originally started, I went with what I found in my family, what I found with um, like what's most promoted. So I used I used to be an advocate smoker. I used to be an advocate drinker, and I used to be an advocate talker. It's just that's just the the simple. I did not have the best coping skills to deal with it, uh, to deal with any traumatic event, honestly. And so I did not talk. I silenced my voice, um, and I used to smoke and drink a lot. And then um, so now. Um, what I do is I have a therapist. Um, I journal a lot. Let's see this. I have a lot of journals. Um, Self-talk. I have affirmations on my phone um, that I talk about. For one second. Like this. This is one that I highly recommend for individuals. It wakes me up every morning. Good morning, Yara. Firstly, let's be grateful that God has given you so I have systems in play um, that promote the changing of my language and the viewing. Um, I also right now, therapy, self-affirmations, I eat much, way healthier um, from the inside out, obviously. And I would say that that's mostly, and then having that support, having that, um, having that support when it comes to therapy and um, having the languaging was really, really important. I always say like, you don't go to the grocery store to get your car fixed, right? So when I want to have help with my mental, I go to someone who is specialized in that to help me see things. Because even as a professional myself, I don't always have the answers. So when I was in my teens and when I was younger and I was going and I, you know, dealt with those traumatic situations, I did not have the best coping skills. I did not know the languaging. I did not understand what was going on. And on default, I did what most of the world does until I was able to um, become an advocate for myself and say, hey, this really doesn't, is it getting me anywhere? Can you provide me with tools? Um, and I hope that that helps. And I still do those things now. <laughs> so Mary asks in the chat, how did you overcome smoking and drinking? Um, so how I can overcame smoking and drinking, great question. So what I did was went away for a while. I went away for a while. I, I, I relocated. I went to a different place. Um, I got away from my friends. Let me paint the picture for you. Someone died in my family, when a younger, someone died in my family and I really needed to get away. I felt extremely sad. I felt extremely suicidal. And my aunt was like, hey, you probably need to get out of here. And so I literally, I dropped out of school um, when my mom passed. And I went away for a long time, like, like two or three months, to be honest. And I just honestly went away from everything. I didn't have a phone. I didn't go. I just went away to my friend's house and I just like put the world on pause and I came back. But to be honest, like I've always been in school. I've always had the system, the systems. I just needed to have a, a quiet place to calm my mind down. I didn't need people around me. I left my relationship at the time. I literally said, I'm, I'm not doing any of this anymore. And I went away for a while. So that's how I did it, to be honest. That's completely like honest. I shut down my life. I, I didn't want anything else out. And so I can, oh, I can speak to you right now about um, the things that I do now to kind of help me 
stay focused when it comes to that. I, um, I have different coping skills. I journal, I write, I have support systems. I develop all my time into educating uh, myself. And I basically, I became a better version of myself. And so once I started, uh, once I attached my existence to something bigger than my trauma, I was able to grasp on grasp on resources that prolonged my life and did not um, take from my life expectancy, if that makes sense. I hope I'm making sense here. Can you tell us a little bit uh, more about, you said that you're currently getting your doctorate degree. So what are your, what are kind of like your future plans and how do you think that work uh, will impact the HIV community at some point? Oh yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. So um, with, with this doctoral program, obviously I wanted to further my, um, investigation and you know I wanted to become more educated on resilience um, and then how 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 did I get here and what are the ways that I can sustain here and so my research is um, in trauma what makes trauma and especially how do we build resilience in the communities that are underprivileged and so um, I definitely believe and that's why I started with my first slide when we experience trauma um, it's, it's uh, if you're an HIV carrier, right, that could be a whole traumatic event, that feeling, um, that re-traumatization that we might feel going to those appointments. And so I, um, I, I relate the two, the two are, are, are in sync. So when I'm speaking from a place, um, I might not have the direct experience, um, but I do know what it feels like to feel some of the same symptoms, depressed, suicidal, um, emptiness. I understand how those feel. And so with my research, understanding how to build resilience, understanding how to overcome trauma will definitely um, will definitely help to improve the HIV community because it'll give you the tips and tools um, to, to create some sort of normalcy or just become an advocate for yourself, right? And knowing that that's not the end, if that makes sense. I'm just reading it, um, Mary's comment just really quickly. She says she has a, a, a niece that has been addicted to drugs for years. Um, sometimes she does well, then right back to doing the same thing. Um, yeah. That's why she asked that question. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And let's be clear. That's why I was, I'm trying to be as candid and as open as possible because I know what I have to say in my life experiences people can use from it. And I have a lot of people um, within my life who have, um, that's why I went away. That's why, that's why that was my answer. Um, I had to get away in order to become better. Um, because when I was in my teens, it was like, wow, you don't know what you're doing with trauma sometimes. You don't even know that it is trauma. So now that I'm approaching my 30s, um, I made that decision. And so it's I have things in my life now, uh, people, places, things that kind of um, propelled me forward. And my identity is huge, it, it, it's bigger, but it's just the testimony of where that person is and, um, how they see themselves, if that is, if that, I'm just exploring the conversation more. And thank you so much for, for bringing that up. And I wanna say, um, thank you for being on the call. Thank you for being an advocate for, for your niece, right? In the, in the moments when she's not advocating for herself or cannot or doesn't seem to be. So thank you for being here. Thanks for asking me that question. And then right now, I just want to ask you, do you have any uh, final thoughts or comments that you want to leave with the audience right now? Yes, 100%. Um, I would like to leave I want to send a lot of love. I want to send a lot of power just to be completely transparent. Um, I want to thank you for the platform. I want to. I want you to, but most importantly, if you don't take anything, take the self-advocacy, take the position of, and that's in any sector of your life. Don't just accept what people are telling you. Do your own research. And then that spiritual component of how is this applying to my life, right? Like, was I abused? Or, yeah, I was abused, but I can actually take this and use this for my better, right? And, and, and explore that no matter how painful it is. So honestly, just never selling and, be, and being an advocate, right? Being an advocate. Always. Sorry, I just had to add myself in here. 
<laughs> so uh, right now, um, I'm going to uh, tell Jeffrey, if you want to come back in to camera, you can. We're going to uh, wrap things up really quickly. And audience, if you give your a virtual round of applause by just saying thank you in the chat. If you have any outstanding questions for her, you can't add it to the chat. We'll go ahead and send it over to her so that she can kind of respond to those things offline. But thank you so much for your time. I, I thought this was excellent information. Um, we do want to let you guys know that we're going to have a, a, another webinar next week. We'll have Dr. Uh, Tiffany Brown. She's a pharmacist who's going to give some additional advice. That presentation is going to start at 4 p.m. Central Time. We typically start at 3, but next week we're, we're going to start at 4 p.m. So we look forward to having you guys back. I looked at the audience. I see that we have a lot of familiar faces. So thank you so much. This is our seventh month. Uh, I want to thank Juliet, who's currently in the, the audience now, but uh, typically you see her on the webinars uh, every every month. Uh, Jeffrey, did you have any final words that you wanted to add uh, with respect to your company just to kind of close this out? And again, thank you so much, Yara. Well, on behalf of Universal Family Connection, as always, and Juliet and the risk reduction staff, which includes um, Mary Turpin, uh, Lade Adamoso and myself, Jeffrey Jones, we'd just like to thank you all for uh, tuning in. Thank you, Yara. I, I feel empowered already, and I really mean that. Um, and I'm really uh, uh, praying for your success as you uh, uh, go through the uh, rigors of earning your PhD. I actually was in Ooh. North Central myself, so I might be there with you soon. You better be. Come on. But, uh, um, yeah, but so I thank everybody that participated and came in. And I uh, want, want you to invite somebody to our next presentation. I see we have 21 participants. Let's make it 42 the next time we're on. Hopefully you'll come back again with us, Yara, and tell us how the program is going. Yes, absolutely, Jeffrey. Yes. Thank you. You're All welcome. right. So thank you, everybody. We did record this presentation, so we're going to edit it and put it up. I do want to let you guys know that you're going to be receiving a survey via email. Um, you'll get an a, a email alert later today, and then we'll send you a reminder out tomorrow, maybe like three days after that. Uh, so if you could please complete that survey, it's really important for us so we can kind of gauge how things are going with the webinar series. Also, it gives us some additional information about um, like how things are going with your current healthcare provider, um, just sort of the, the overall set in the market right now. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you give us and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. So thank you everybody. And again, thank you Yara, thank you Jeffrey and Julia again, who's in the audience and we'll see you guys back soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Thank you. Dr. Brittany. You always do such an awesome job too. So oh, thanks. thank you. Brittany was on vacation and she's still uh, working. Yes. She's phenomenal. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm in Vegas this time. I'm usually in Chicago, but I'm I'm in Vegas. But I don't stop working because we want to make sure um, right, well, we're helpful. helping everybody. Enjoy your vacation. Play a slot machine for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a good good afternoon and we'll see you guys back next week.